So Biffa Susumab is uh, uh, essentially an agent that blocks VEGF. So its toxicities are mostly related to uh, blocking VEGF. <coughs> and so the way I call its toxicities, they're mostly silent toxicities. They're not uh, manifested themselves like with chemotherapy or EGFR inhibitors, uh, meaning the patient doesn't exhibit them per se. But they're limited to hypertension, uh, uh, to in about 12% of the patients, the hypertension will require medications, and you would use essentially oral medications, oral antihypertensives, and 99 plus percent of these patients will have their blood pressure controlled. Uh, issues with uh, wound healing, so in case the patient needs an emergency surgery, there are issues with wound healing. If it's an elective surgery, you just wait four weeks uh, uh, after the last dose of bevacizumab, some prefer six to eight weeks before you do the surgery. And then you start it four weeks after the surgery. There's also the risk of perforation in one to two percent of all patients. Um, and that risk of perforation should stop the patient from receiving bevacizumab. Then there is the risk of prot proteinuria, uh, shedding pro proteins through the urine. And again, for the overwhelming majority of the patients, uh, it's not that significant. So overall, bevacizumab does not seem uh, to worsen the chemotherapy toxicities. That's one. Two, as I said, it doesn't have its own visible toxicities. Most of its toxicities tend to be related to the VEGF inhibitory effect. Uh, and uh, one serious e side effect is arterial and uh, thromboembolic events. A stroke or MI. And these usually occur in patients who are older who are at significant risk for these, uh, 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 for these disorders uh, and patients who had a recent myocardial infarction within 6 to 12 months or stroke. For those patients, you just wouldn't administer bevacizumab. 